if i had to remember from the time when i was uh, feeling this it would be you know if i had to say about the song that release when i was feeling i was in love was roke na roke na okay. from uh, badrinath ki dulania so yeah that was a time actually i liked someone and it didn't work out and i made that song so not many people know that roke na roke na na was made out of true love out of a real feeling okay so and songs that are associate like this is my song that are associate yeah. to you know yeah. uh, love not not that i'm saying love is as sad as roke na roke na na <laughs> but uh if i had to go back and think about childhood tunes which would you know mm. maybe make you feel a little infatuated maybe in seventh standard or eighth standard would be pehla nasha and you know those kind of songs yeah i think all all the 90s music yeah okay what was your first heartbreak like and how did you deal with it was it through music song what did you do my first heartbreak in life now nah, this is heavy <laughs> are too many are there too many <laughs> no no not not actually and might be twice or thrice maybe in life but okay. the first one was uh, maybe at 16 where oh, i broke okay. my own heart only i think i i didn't go and tell the girl only that i liked her and someone else did acha oh that's okay yeah so like maybe maybe later in life she figured or i had told her she was from my school Mm-hmm. and uh, i never managed to tell her that i really really liked her so it was my first heartbreak and i think i just uh, had a lot of pizza that day and just went <laughs> like it's okay let's let's pizza. eat it out. how lovely people eat usually have chocolate <laughs> people usually have chocolate and other things but you had pizza interesting <laughs> tell me what attracts you about a woman i think uh, a lot of people you know would assume that Uh, it would be good looks for me but it's not j- just that that is something which is maybe a bonus maybe but for me i would be very attracted to someone who is real not just comes across as real is really real you know mm-hmm. a lot of people you meet today they try to portray that they're real but mm-hmm. genuinely they aren't so mm-hmm. i would i would say someone who's real who can who's just themselves and is real ha but explain more on real like comfortable in her own space in her own skin mm. being able to maybe voice an opinion without even caring you know if she is right or wrong about it but this is what she feels about this certain woman with a mind of her own is what you yes. say yes and being able to somewhat be sincere about who who they are i think any person even uh, when mm. i make friends yeah it's very important for me to you know connect on a level where there is sincerity in conversation otherwise it's very difficult for me to even be friends with people hmm. you look through you can see through fakeness is what you yeah that's, that's that's my problem <laughs> i think <laughs> doesn't help in and the dating in an game of life where, <laughs> and you are in an industry doesn't. where you do you do find a lot of people different kinds of people so i'm sure you sense them yeah. okay are you in a relationship no single and working very hard <laughs> okay now we'll talk about work what are the songs you're waiting to launch right now i think uh, you know as a musician every artist feels uh, that every song has some special value in it but you know i would say that my parents uh, heard my song from radhe sham okay and for them it's my most special song i don't know how why in my whole uh, career up to now like my mom just heard it yesterday we were all on a drive mm-hmm. so she said i want this song to come out immediately this is the music that i want my son to be known for and i was so that song somewhere you know usually it's always oh i want this to come out or that to come out but this time i want the song my parents really huh? really love it's, it's the yeah. song from radhe sham Which i'm working on it to- still You're yeah, yeah. When I'm, I'm waiting this still, time, but it was about to still. release. But it all, everything's again in almost lockdown mode here. Yeah. So the film's been pushed, and but hopefully, whenever the song comes, I believe it'll make place in people's hearts. Is it a is it a multilingual the the film? 
Mandasa? The film is, yes. Uh, it's in uh, Malayalam, Kannada, Telugu and uh, Hindi. Mm-hmm. So the Hindi songs obviously right now are just in the Hindi language. They have not been, usually we do this uh, once the film releases like in MS Dhoni. Mm-hmm. The film and the al- Hindi album were out and almost six months after that, we released the, you know, trilingual albums. Okay. So maybe after that, a lot of my South fans are yes. wanting me to do this already in Telugu. Mm-hmm. So let's see. I think this time maybe I'll uh, speak to the producers and request them. Maybe we can simultaneously release a Hindi Sounds and other languages maybe. And Telugu as well because uh, that's partly... Telugu is mother- home ground a little yeah. bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So maybe Telugu. Okay. Tell me the songs you sing to yourself. Uh, Currently, apart from the songs you compose, of course, you compose the songs, you would sing those songs uh, on a bad day where you're not completely like clued in and you don't feel the world is correct. What else? Is there anything, any, any, any number of songs or any particular one? I really listen to uh, uh-huh. I really like that song. I feel it helps you journey within. Mm-hmm. And it helps you take a you know a road trip just sitting in your hall. So I think that song is really nice when you're a little down or you feel the day is not gone how you wanted yeah. it to go. The next question you already answered, but I'll ask it again. Is your mom's favorite song of yours? I think this one, the <laughs> upcoming one is one of her favorites. Out of what is released, um, she really likes uh, Tere Mere from Chef. Which oh, Arman okay. has sung mm-hmm. and written by Virag. So mm-hmm. she likes that. Okay. Do you find music the closest art form to God or divinity? Oh, completely. Completely. Yeah. I think music and I would say painting also, in a way. It's mm-hmm. just an empty canvas and someone just starts drawing yeah. something, painting something. It's just, I, I think uh, music obviously is more closer, if you mm-hmm. would ask me, because not to take away from their yeah. uh, talent, but it's thinking of notes, thinking of melodies, thinking of a thought, to, you know, something from no, you know, we musicians don't always make music to film scripts or yeah. someone else's ideas. We wake up and there can be a song. So people who can do that, any musician I respect because that's not that's not something which can be taught in any you know Blessed educational yeah. how to create from thin air hmm. i think that makes you the closest to god i think being able to create a melody from nothing yeah. not using the piano i'm not saying learning the chords hmm. and all hmm. those things just humming a melody out of nowhere and it being original it being your own hmm. that is a gift that is being close to god yeah Tell me about your growing up with your grandfather's influence and uh, the days you spent with him. Tell me about that period of your life. Unbelievably, it's his birthday today. Oh God, that's that's and amazing. He, would, he okay. would be 97 years old today. Oh, happy birthday to him wherever. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> My relationship with him would be really, I would, I would say... Uh, an epic one. I don't think anyone can have that uh, grandfather and grandson relationship. It's really difficult to obviously, you know, connect when you're from a different generation. Sometimes we don't connect with our parents on so many things. But with him somewhere, like since the age of four or five, when I started sitting uh, besides him, used to sit like this and face the window. And there used to be like a nice sunset happening and he was playing some jazz chords on his keyboard and singing Hindustani rags and raginis. Hmm. And from the age of 5 to 15, I was very blessed and lucky. I would say that I didn't, I was, I can say we were lucky that dad didn't make it back then immediately. I think by the time we reached our 10th grade, he had started getting successful. Hmm. But before that, we all were one family. And we were staying with our grandparents. So it was just me, Arman, mom, uh, dad, and Dada Dadi. So I was very lucky that I got those 10 years with mm. someone who started creating music back in the 50s. Yeah. So from him, I have 
maybe not uh, you know proper learned knowledge of hindustani classical but something that was keeping on going on every day for one young kid hmm. so every day those notes are somewhere in me you know a lot of musicians who know that i have trained in maybe western classical or you know trinity college ask me how i would you know maybe pull off something like a mai rahu hmm. or uh, the song from sarabjit salamat because hmm. they are quite uh, rag based and heavy hmm. indian music influence yes, hmm. so so i i can't explain that i think that comes from him from hmm. the journey i'm of 10 years i made with that great musician sardar malik who's fortunately and uh, my grandfather i still feel he's always alive and he's somewhere here he he blessed me uh, with that uh, side of music you know i was seeing the music sittings happen at home with uh, annu uncle's music sometimes or dad was doing but this man and his instrument were enough to know the whole sphere of good music good chords and good melodies so for me my relationship with him was solely music till it became you know when i started growing up i was around 10 or 12 where he started telling me his dreams and you know he started telling me i wanted to do this in my life and that didn't happen when he started seeing me grow up he would share a lot with me and it was in the year i think 2005 or 6 when he was in his last days and the music of veer zara had just released mm. and he was a uh, contemporary with madan mohan saab in his time mm. so he was really you know he he it was his dream after seeing that and the way that music was received by people back then and you know a generation that didn't know madan mohan a lot of people mm. like i would know because i have heard it mm. but a lot of my friends and all never knew who this mm. composer is but through this music they figured okay there was a yesterday a legend whose music we listening to in veer zara so it was my grandfather's dream then when he you know in his last days he said i want to do an album i want to bring back my music i want to bring something of my style which you know seeing the success of this i think it's still relevant in today's world mm-hmm. and it remained as a dream he passed away and it never happened mm-hmm. and at that time i was really broken i was i think that was actually my first heartbreak if i have to mm, figure okay. that was the first time i felt real pain mm. and i felt at the age of 14 i wish i knew how to produce music i wish i could i just hope i could just make him sing something right now through the mic record it and put it out mm. but obviously i had no gear no equipment no knowledge about this side of producing music mm. and that's when uh, you know i think dad dad told this to arman and me a few years back i think 2 3 years back that when dada was passing away he told my father that mm-hmm. uh, you know take care of these two boys and please tell them to pursue music because i think they are special and they have something which will uh, take my legacy forward mm-hmm. so maybe he had that vision and before he you know left this place he had his heart was full of a blessing for both of us and he felt we were the kids who would do this for him i wish he was here today to see you know when we made mai rahu ya na rahu happen as a song that mm-hmm. is a tribute from me the 14 year old me to my grandfather mm-hmm. and it's always going to be special so i think i i always now try to give back to him and his name through each and every song it's always like that i make it for my parents especially sometimes for my grandparents so i think music is for this family and for me specifically it's our give back to the greatness that we got you know from such great people in our family so would you play anything for us for your grandfather right now yes kisi roz barish jo aaye समझ ले न बूंदो में मैं हूं सुबह धूप तुमको सताए समझ ले न किरणों में मैं हूं कुछ कहूं या न कहूं तुम मुझको सदा सुनते रहना बस इतना है तुम से कहना बस इतना है तुम 
से कहना बस इतना है तुम से कहना बस इतना है तुम से कहना All heart. Hmm? Thank you. What is your ideal love story? Coming back to the love angle in the whole whole uh, interview. I wish I could <laughs> sing my song from <laughs> Radhesham. Literally, like this is not for me to plug and promote this, but it speaks. I think till now, in all my romantic songs that I've made yes. in the journey of the last seven eight years of about at least seventy love songs. Yeah. this somehow beats in a great way in a good way all my other romantic songs with one simple emotion of how it's 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 a forever love you know that's my kind of love story i think it's uh, you know it covers the feeling of a mai rahu a tere mere aur ruke na ruke all in one song i feel it's all come through yeah. lyrically even virag sir has written such amazing verses hmm. and it's 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 a song that has a shade of pain a, mm. a, a little bit mm. it it's not a sad song but it's got those you know a little bit of melancholy in the words a little mm. bit of that in the tune mm. and i want to sing it but that's the <laughs> song i okay. think i think that song defines a perfect love story okay. and uh, for me a perfect love story is the one that um, which remains and you know somehow just it, today it's very difficult for stories to remain you know we all believe that wo pyar sach hai jo nahi mila and all that i know that's good it's yeah. good to feel like that aashik for two three days <laughs> but a love story any love story is beautiful if it remains and stands through Steve. all yeah. the difficulties and all the tests of you know today's time. environment or time whatever it any should film, remain with an all any on screen love story that you like that you you watch it and say okay now that is beautiful the the many i there was there was this film why am i forgetting this there was a there was an english film i am Serendipity. forgetting that's also one of them but uh, there was uh, there was a movie i think blue valentine is okay mm-hmm. a beautiful film i don't know if many have watched it but that is beautiful Okay. Even even Titanic in a way is mm. really really epic. Yeah. I would say even Avatar is. There are many, mm. but the best would be Blue Valentine for me. And I from really Bollywood, know. anything from Bollywood. These are. D L J. S R K. Nothing. Any any movie of Shah Rukh Khan just yeah. has to be one of the best. I think uh, Kal Ho Na and Dil Wale Dulhan. Yeah, both. There's a tie between them. The two. Okay. Yeah. Do you get an artist block, and how do you deal with it? Just when I came back from Dubai, I had an artist <laughs> block only. I came back with a broken leg. Yeah, we you talked about that. Saw, and I just, I, I think that injury was the best way for me to get a homecoming holiday. You know, I was having a good time. I came to Dubai for work, but I think I came back to India for a holiday, literally. Since three months, I'm having a block only. I have not tried to make. It's the first time. in around 7 or 8 years that i'm not composing anything since the last 2 3 months since i've come back okay and it's not that i'm not uh, like i tried once or twice mm. but just i was i was feeling i was getting a little like but rusty in some so okay. i was like i don't want to do it right now are you are you a very you, are you very critical to judge yourself when when you do not compose for 3 months do you feel uh, do you feel bad or you take it easy what is the way you deal with it i actually laugh at myself when <laughs> i wake up and i was like you you haven't worked hard you have not done anything in 3 months i look at myself in the mirror and be like not you're not a good you're not a hard working composer you just want to be successful i'll put myself down a little bit i'll fight with myself yeah. and then from the other side the composer will come back and fight with a good song you're a so i've been like doing that yeah i have I have two, <laughs> but both 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 are innocent and sweet. They are not. I don't have the devil side in me. 
it's i have both angels it just depends <laughs> who's winning today okay <laughs> right any songs that have made you envious the work of uh, other composers you mean which i really okay. felt you know this yes. should have been mine yeah hmm i would say uh, pritam das one song uh, would be tumse hi din hota hai this song i feel i wish i had made okay then there is a song uh, that sachin jagar made really nice song jeena jeena kaise jeena hmm. this one and i think uh, nadan parinde Ram oh. answers. Oh, uh, yeah. that's that's a song. I was like, wow! Like it's so, it's so like you know, it's so from our generation of sound and era of sound that and you know the words that balance which of little uh, you know bridge bhasha meets rock yeah. means yeah. philosophy. Unbelievable song. I wish I had made at least these three are my top three yeah. picks which I always listen to and I always think I should make something like that or I wish I had made that. yeah but it's nice that you admit it it's it's quite nice to also uh, well i'm i I'm, i'm always going to admit i'm very <laughs> truthful for my own good <laughs> right so what about attending concerts other people's concerts uh, who do you not who whose concert will you not miss it might or might not have your songs but whose concert will you not miss oh no completely i would if i got a chance i would love to you know i missed it it was in a small place in goa but it was lucky ali i would love to see oh. him hmm. perform on stage then uh, i haven't got a chance to see but a but an ar rehman concert it was at the expo but yes, i could you were there you got to see it you sent me videos yes. of the show yeah and and hans zimmer that's yeah. an artist who's uh, you know music that i want to experience live like he is one of the greatest score masters ever mm-hmm. but watching him perform live with so many musicians would be a dream so when you are at these concerts are you a fan or are you watching what is the process you are a fan like musically i don't try try to break it down then and there because then you'll never enjoy yeah, the concert yeah, yeah. i'll i go as a listener and i have fun and uh, anywhere even if i go sometimes my friends have taken me to you know listen to a few new hmm. djs or like deep house artists and a lot of different music hmm. also i i don't immediately go and start analyzing what they're doing hmm. what they're mixing what tempo and all that that is that that later anyway i figure it out hmm. you know but i first try to see if i connect to the mood and the soul that artist that artist is trying to put out once yeah. once you're there i think then everyone is a fan i think if an artist can do that you know to someone who's not heard like i hadn't listened to a particular artist and my friend made me hear that artist and i connected to the music so i went from that song to see the show live hmm. this is about 5 6 years back so sometimes the music brings you sometimes even someone's performance makes you feel like wow i want to see more of what this person can do right so i think it's 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 that it's it should draw yeah. you What about international artists who are in independent musicians? Any any favorites you have? Like we have so many now across the world. They could be Indian origin also. And mm, I I think obviously Dua Lipa is someone who's who are really really like I think her uh, whole ability to speak for a whole generation of girls hmm. alone just you know that's hmm. that's incredible. Billie Eilish. then uh, her brother phineas uh, he's he's the one who uh, worked on the track with hans zimmer for uh, the james bond soundtrack which just mm-hmm. won the golden globe i think these three four new artists even uh, you know say sean mendes and bieber has always been a favorite for a long time i think mm-hmm. his music's been keep on moving and doing better through all these years mm-hmm. and a lot of uh, musicians uh, from india also slowly mm. and steadily are doing english music arman's doing quite a bit of his mm. own his music yes. really reaching out so well globally then there are artists like uh, you know pratik kumar there's an artist called pratik kumar's there yeah i would say even someone like malvika manoj is a girl uh, mm. i think from chennai or somewhere very nice english music 
hmm. and real real good song writing so we also have a lot of these uh, talents you know who are who are slowly steadily you know i'm glad that arman's taken that step you know to hmm. not just be stuck to bollywood or you know yeah. he's been successful in the south also hmm. but he's taken this avenue very seriously and it goes to show there's so many people in india who like who, who comment on his uh, yeah. uh, english covers or his english songs saying you are giving hope to us to you know not stop uh, mm. the music we believe in a lot of kids because our country speaks and knows a lot of hindi mainly mm. so they feel this won't work but there is a lot of music from india that's being playlisted and reaching out to foreign artists and foreign listeners people who are fans of maybe an ed sheeran or a uh, mm. you know someone like uh, michael bublé and all these musicians people who listen to that are also listening to arman mm-hmm. malik song or listening to an english song from india now it's it's like that it's not and, that you know the world is it was also. their music coming to us most of the yeah. time and we that's what we call new music now our music also is reaching out and they feel this is a new genre yeah coming to again uh, your followers now you and arman of course you have some millions of followers across the world <laughs> and <laughs> and they are all waiting for your next album and they are all you know you have a huge uh, amalians as they say uh, yeah. how responsible do you have to be when you put a post out you can speak your mind but you still uh, are an influencer so how how do you keep that thin line i think nowadays i send it to a lawyer before i put it out <laughs> because you don't know who you're upsetting suddenly everyone has an opinion on the internet anyone with wifi can just say yeah. ki you meant this not this you know yeah. so you have to be careful yeah but uh, yeah i now uh, i am very careful about you know about certain things maybe p's and q's because i used to be a little brash and if someone spoke to me a certain way i'd give it back in the same way now i don't now i have my own nice respectful way of giving it back and usually i don't even need to you know i used to do it thinking that i have no support but then i saw the kind of yeah. love i have from my fans now i have to stop them ki now you all don't get into this i am not saying anything you all don't say so it's it's basically because i've got fans who are 10 years old 12 years old and yeah their parents also know that their kids are my fans so yeah. somewhere i don't want them to ever you know like spe- feel that okay he's you know you say aggressive mm-hmm. or he speaks like too brashly for a young kid to read mm-hmm. that yeah you know so all those things even like i used to smoke cigarettes and stuff so i used to put you know when i was a young kid i used to put pictures looking cool ki ha yani whatever like let's put a picture like this then slowly steadily as i saw like my fan previously i used to have fans from 22 23 to maybe 35 Hmm. that number start getting to like 12 year old 10 years so i was like okay now then i start seeing comments that please don't do this and all that you know young kids getting affected by hmm. me maybe just having a puff for a picture hmm. so i didn't want to you know do anything like that for you know you know for their parents to feel that you know that yeah. is not a right person to follow hmm. Hmm. and that that i'm good with that i think i should some things don't need to be completely said on social media all the time yeah and they know me for as real you know as i am they know me at least 99% so more than that 1% is okay if they don't know me i can keep quiet <laughs> okay tell me how do you deal with anger and rejection rejection is to every day <laughs> every every day in our industry this this is for everyone who thinks it's easy once you've done well and you have a name and you have some awards it's not every day there are songs that come back and like a director would say it's not working for me i'm not liking the mood and it's been locked since the last 6 months and suddenly one day they don't want your song okay yeah so a lot of these things happen and more so they happen now because there's so many you know there's options and there's so many composers and you know very few manage to make the cut i'm glad i have but still even the biggest composers and singers of our country are still at a testing level you know mm-hmm. today many big singers also mm-hmm. sing demo tracks many big composers are still pitching for films that they're not maybe signed for mm-hmm. you know they're not the producers are not contractually bound to work with us it's not mm-hmm. a patthar ki lakeer for them yeah. so when yeah. those things happen i think every 
every musician hopes that you know it's like i i hope i get this film or i hope i get that situation mm. so those rejections keep happening every day and mm. that somewhat when you know that you gave your best and you know that you put more than 100 to 100% of yourself into a song which i and arman and i would say even arijit who's you know worked a lot mm. with me we do a lot towards that but there are times that it just doesn't work out that song doesn't release it doesn't it stays in the hard disk for 10 years and then maybe some day gets someday. the light of day so i i feel you have to take them take these things in your stride it's it's easy to get angry and be like they don't get my music i don't want to do music a lot of such reactions would happen maybe 10 years ago when i was you know trying to get into films and obviously till even like 5 6 years ago i used to get irritated it just spoil my mood you know i don't want to go out today i don't want to do this like this is not happening and you know this film got snatched away it went to someone else so all those things somewhat would anger me now i feel it's more like uh awesome i have two films i'm great i have more time to holiday more time to sleep more time to meet handsome more time to spend with family so i'm nurturing those things also because mm. that is also important i feel just running after projects and then getting disappointed is better you let the projects and let everything come to okay. me i, I feel you what is coming it. is going to come it's yeah. if it's going to be what i deserve i have to if i get three small films also here i have to give those three my best music yeah. i cannot i never think that if it's not a big actor film i'm not going to do good music for it Yeah. that sentiment never happens so yeah. i think whatever is presenting itself to me i'm taking that and doing my best i'm not angry about it thank you very much for speaking to me it's a pleasure i don't have to say it you know it it's, <laughs> thank uh, you it's always lovely to speak to you and we always speak about different things if you look at all our interviews it's never the same we always talk about yes very different topics and tell us a little bit about the cover we have a very we have very few time left which other composer has done before me any do we have any no one yes. firstly i would say a big big uh, thank you to the one here manju raman ma'am and her whole team uh, when i came to you know shoot uh, for the film fair cover which is going to be out very soon and you all are going to see it it was the first time i have done a photo shoot only in my life because this <laughs> musician has always been in this surrounding and it was only someone like her who could pull me out from here and say no you come here and this is where we're going to shoot this is how we're going to shoot and there was a lot i would say i was very happy with this shoot because a lot that went into my mind i was nervous how I wanted to look how I wanted to be portrayed and she knew exactly how you know to present me i think i've seen the pictures and everything that's come out i i am breathing a sigh of relief ki i'm looking the musician i'm looking sensible i'm looking human i'm look, and you're not looking like the I way mean. you're looking right now not that you're looking yes, bad right now I'm but looking, you're looking, looking different well kept groomed <laughs> <laughs> so i think those things which were worrying me i think the whole team took care of it we shot it at the maidan it was beautiful and varoin uh, designed his clothes varoin marwa varoin abba yeah. was there yeah. who was supporting us Styling, in the looks yeah. then even uh, a big yeah. big thank you to rizwan sir yes. and you know the whole uh, team at film fair he's uh, really awesome and the way we had a great time you know when we yeah. came for the middle east awards i performed there broke a leg there <laughs> got a you cover shot broke a there. leg actually broke a everything. leg everything i think everything happened for me and i'm very happy that this is something that's maybe the first step for a musician from here to be on such a prestigious cover and such a prestigious place really grateful and happy thank you very much and hope to see you soon in dubai yeah yes next week soon. Next week <laughs> see you bye see you thank you